Hello YouTube, it's Doss Gregor, and welcome to a new Linux distribution review. Today I am doing a special request by a distribution maker named Dell Potts. He has created a personalized distribution based upon Linux Mint. He calls his creation Cody Ice Polar Bear, and it's mainly a multimedia streaming minimalistic distribution and as I said based upon Linux Mint. Now as you can see I'm currently in my Gen 2 desktop and uh, the reason is that I ran into some strange issues when installing his distribution and so if you're interested in this after looking at the whole video hopefully you do watch the whole video <laughs> then I would like for you all to have all the information right up front as to how to get started with his version of Linux Mint Cody Ice Polar Bear Edition. So without further ado, if we go ahead and start the little test environment, it will begin. You get this menu. Now if you go to the installer, it goes straight to installing. But we want to go ahead and go into Boot Live System. Whether you choose Boot Live System or choose Boot System Installer, you're going to run into this small problem at first. And that is, as it boots, it will error after it starts BusyBox with this slash cal format specified as AUFS and no support found. Well, we are stuck, or are we? I go ahead and hit enter and I go ahead and type in exit and hit enter again. This will exit this nefarious error and begin the distro booting. Now as you see it comes straight to Dale as the user and as I said the creator, the almighty person who made this, his name is Dale Potts. So we choose Dale as the username and the password is live user all lowercase l-i-v-e-u-s-e-r hit enter and we are welcomed with his version of Linux Mint Cody Ice Polar Bear as you see he has customized the background he has customized the top and the bottom yet we see the Linux Mint that it gives away its true background he has stated that he will be looking at fully branding to his distribution. However, at this time, I'm also told that he has moved on on operating systems and may no longer build new versions of this. However, he has asked me specifically to do a small review. So, what we want to do, if we take a quick look this is the Ubuntu version of Linux Mint, at least that's the backbone, so you will be familiar with most of these things if you are comfortable and used to Ubuntu. And of course, as we can see, it is running the Mate version. I'm sorry, Mate. Not Mate. You know, for many years I called it Mate, and then I went to their website, and, it's, and they were saying, it rhymes with latte, not with mate. So it's like latte, mate. So I always do try to say the right things, although with my American accent, I sometimes have it all wrong, all screwed up. But any which way. If we look at his applications in the live DVD version here, you will see that we have the basic accessories. We have GIMP and we have Firefox. He does include, of course, Thunderbird as a mail client, Hexchat as an IRC client, and Pigeon as an internet messenger. In Office, he has installed the LibreOffice Suite, for those of you who need Office products. And in Sound and Video, you will see just six items, but very powerful items. Banshee does a great job with multimedia, Bracero for CD and DVD burning, the Kodi Multimedia Center for an excellent, simple interface to all your multimedia needs. 
and VLC, of course, for video and sound video, etc., etc. System tools. Now you say, Das Gregor, how do I install this cool Linux distribution? I don't see an install anywhere. So we look at applications, we look at system tools, and we find there is something that doesn't even look like it might be that, but it's called System Back. And if we open up System Back, we can see where we can do a couple different things. If you play with the live DVD and you like exactly the way it is, including the background, which I think is pretty nifty looking, then you will want to do a system copy. Now, the caveat of doing a system copy is that it will only use the Dale user ID and live user as the password. If you wish to create your own root password, your own user ID and password, you will need to do a system install. If you do a system install, you will have everything that you see here except for the background. The background, if we go in here into System Preferences and uh, Look and Feel Appearance, and we go into Backgrounds here, you will notice that this is what it's chosen, chosen and it is available within the background setup. We will get back to that because we are going to do a system install instead of a system copy. So when we do a system install, we can put in our name, Das Gregor, and then our username, Das Gregor. Put in the password you like. Put in a root password and we will call this Cody Ice. Click Next. Now you will see your partition settings. Now this confused me in the beginning because I was trying to figure out a few things but I have since tried a couple times and for your benefit so that you don't see me fumbling about we shall look at this and we shall first off unmount that we are going to delete everything up front here so that we see nothing this is a fresh clean slate so what we want to do here is we want to first create a 4 gig uh, partition that we are going to set for swap we're going to say mount the swap and press this little arrow to make it so make it so we will choose the next one and we want to create another partition. So we click that little left arrow. Now we want the mount point to be the root. ext4, we want it to format, make it so. And did we lose this on this one? Yeah, we did. We're going to swap, make it so. All right, we have both of those now set up. We want to make sure that if we want this menu and everything that he's customized with the menu, we want to make sure that we check mark the transfer, user configuration, and data files. Install grab2 bootloader. Uh, I'm so used to choosing it that I'm going to go ahead and choose the uh, dev SDA. We will click next, and then there's nothing more than to say start. Now this will take anywhere from three to eight minutes depending upon processor time and ability. It seems to go pretty quick. But for your viewing pleasure, I shall pause the video at this time until it says completed. And it has completed in the copy phase, installing the system now, emptying cache and preparing for the final portion of the install. And the system install is completed. Hooray! We click OK. Now at this point, we are going to go ahead and shut down and make sure that we are booting into Cody Ice Polar Bear. So let's do a system shutdown. Click the shutdown button. It should ask us to eject the media. Press enter. And here we go again, except now we're going to go into settings, storage, remove, at that. So now it says host drive instead of Cody Ice. And we're going to start again.
Now you'll also notice that as we start that it no longer gets the init RAM FS busy box error but goes directly into the OS. I have also done a copy and it does the exact same thing. It doesn't give you the error. So you only get that error when you first use the ISO media to either boot in your virtual box or install it for the first time on your computer. Now I have tested this out on my main lap or not my main laptop but my testing laptop and it did the exact same thing there so it's not an issue with a virtual box but an issue with the way the ISO is set up so any moment here we should see that yes there is Das Gregor and we will click on him and type in our password and momentarily we should see Cody Ice Polar Bear installed in this virtual box but you will notice that it is the default wallpaper for Linux Mint and as stated uh, Dale has mentioned that he hopes to go ahead and try to theme it better and add his own branding to remove the Linux Mint icon up here and maybe at that time he'll make sure or check to see that his wallpaper is included in just an install and not a system copy. Because if we go into system and we go into preferences, look and feel, appearance, and as I showed you before in backgrounds, we had the background wallpaper listed. It is no longer there with a system install. It is, however, there if you do a copy, but then you don't have your own username. You have to go ahead and create a user ID separately and go forward from that and then I would assume that if you did that you'd still end up with this same look and feel when you did it manually after the fact. Uh, if we look at the menu of course we still have the exact same thing we had before with GIMP and Firefox and LibreOffice and Banshee, Bracero, Kodi Media Center etc etc and as stated previously this is Mate and Ubuntu on the back end. So if you're familiar with that and you go to administration, you will see we have Ubuntu's Update Manager, Synaptic, uh, Synaptic Package Manager, etc. Everything else that you would find within an Ubuntu distribution is available. The great thing that I have found about Dale Potts distribution, and he created this, of course, for his family and be able to use at home and he wanted to share it with everybody else so he has made his distribution available for the public and he mainly used it from what I understand with the Cody Media Center. Cody Media Center is a pretty nifty uh, tool. It allows you to have a simplified menu system and I've used this with my Raspberry Pi when I was first testing it out uh, with this type of an environment hooked up with the HDMI to the TV. It's very simple to go either into music or videos and set your music library and if it's a UPnP or uh, it's set up for DLNA etc you can set this so that you can go right into it. It's got a great interface easy to use. I'm not going to show you this because I'm not going to go into my NAS drive. I don't want to play anything that may cause any type of copyright strikes on here but I will tell you that I have tested it and it does work very well. Now we'll go ahead and exit out of here and go back to the main system. I'll point out a few other issues or not really issues but features in the sound and video with Banshee, this is a pretty nifty tool. And of course, you can get these applications on any Linux distribution if you wish to just install a portion or a part of any of these things. But one thing I really liked was being able to go to the Internet Archive and go to the audiobooks and find public domain books that are available. And you're able, for instance, to go to something like Aesop's Fables, The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, and many others. You can search for them and see what you can find. It's much like LibriVox because LibriVox is up here for instance and I've always been a big fan of LibriVox because there are a lot of volunteers out there who have done some wonderful things for 
works that are in the public domain currently. And as we can see, we have all the chapters there, and if we wanted to listen to one of these, we could click on it and tell it to play, and it would do so. And Banshee does not quit when you close it, but comes over to here, so we will quit it manually. And that is pretty much everything in a small nutshell with Del Potts distribution. As I said, he calls this Cody Ice Polar Bear based upon Linux Mint Mate. And so far, I've done some testing for a few days. The only quirks that I really found was the installation and starting of the ISO, whether that was in a virtual box or within the uh, desktop or laptop uh, testing environment that I have. I wanted, as I said, to do this in a virtual box just so you could see uh, some of those issues with installing it that would be a little bit more difficult for me to show if I already had it on the system. And that's pretty much the reasoning for that. I normally don't do distribution reviews in VirtualBox because, as I've stated in the past, the way something will work in a virtualized environment can sometimes be completely different from the experience that you will have on real hardware. In this situation though, I have not seen a very big difference in the real hardware versus the virtualized hardware and felt it would be much easier to do a small review for you in the virtualized environment so I could show you those boot up problems. Uh, I know sometime Linux for you and me with Caddy, he will have his camcorder there and he'll show the, the desktop and say, hey guys, look at what's going on here. And I won't even go any further on my terrible Australian exit, but eh, anyway. <laughs> I felt this might be the easier method. Um, Dale was very excited about me looking at his distribution, doing a small review, and if I'm going to do a review, I like to make sure that I give you all the little things that I run into, and so that you don't get there and say, hey, Doss, what are you talking about? I can't even get past this error. So I like to kind of do that and show you the things that I find and also explain the differences for instance when installing whether you do a copy system or in a total, a total install. So that is Cody Ice Polar Bear by Dale Potts. I will leave links in the description to his channel to his review of, his, of this and also inside of that are the links to the actual uh, place where you can download so that you can get it from him and I hope you enjoyed this so if it's morning evening noon or night whatever in the world you're having enjoy it have a good one thanks guys bye